Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about the prototype pattern in JavaScript. And if you have not watched my previous video, go check them out because there are further patterns that I've already discussed. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it as it really helps the channel grow and to push our content to every developer out there. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So what we have right now is a React application in which we have some shapes. And what I can do is that I can actually add those shapes like circle, square, rectangle, and I can keep adding them. And as I do so, you will see that they are kind of stacked in a flex wrap situation and it will go on and on and on. Now, what I want to do is to use the prototype pattern here. And if you're interested in knowing how I built this application, let me know in the comment and I can probably create a video on that as well. But apart from that, what we have right now is essentially this app.js in which we have a loop running over this shapes array. So when we click this add circle, add square, add rectangle, a new shape is added into this shapes array. And what happens after that is that it just loop over. And you can see that these buttons have their click handler. So when we add a shape of circle, it essentially adds that based on this switch statement. And finally, we just render all those shapes. Now, what I want to explain to you here is that the prototype pattern, how that works and how prototypal inheritance works in JavaScript. So for example, let's take a a look at an array if I have an array which is something like const for example let's say fruits so I'm going to create an array of fruits in which we could have an apple for example we could also have a mango so we could do something like this and we can also have grapes so I would do something like this now I can't really have them without quotation marks so I'm going to add them so they are treated as strings and now we have an array now if I have this array and if I log fruits let's see what happens I can open this and you will see that I only see these indices, which is 0, 1, 2, which are the places for these elements. But here you see prototype. This is the prototype pattern that we are talking about and what this is essentially. So this array fruit is essentially an instance of an array, which means that this is an array. And if I open the prototype object here, you see that it has a couple of functions. You might already be familiar with a lot of these functions. For example, fill, filter, find, we have push, pop, all of these things are essentially part of this prototype object on the array class which are now available to every instance of the array which means that every array that we create now it essentially has all of these functions but the fun part is that this really doesn't stop here because i could go on and on and on and i see another prototype object at the very bottom now this is the object prototype which is essentially everything in javascript so everything in javascript is an object so if i open this you see that now this object essentially has some functions like has own property is prototype of and whatnot so the question is can i just do here fruits dot value of actually i can because this function is being inherited through all of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the same situation here and how this is available or possible in javascript so first of all what i want to do is that i want to perhaps add a functionality to all these things but before that we need to understand what is the structure right now so if i go to this shapes.js you will notice a couple of things first of all we have a constant which is just to define what type of shape is so we have a circle a square and rectangle after that you will notice that we have this base class that we call shape and this shape essentially has a constructor which just takes a name and it has this property called rotation enable but we are not going to talk about this let's say we don't have this at all so at this moment we just have a shape and we can add these shapes but now you will notice that this class circle is extending the shape which means that everything that this shape has will be also inherited into this circle class which means that this circle will also now have a name property okay similar now you will see that this circle also has an additional property called radius. Now if we go further, you will see that this rectangle also extends shape just like the circle. So circle extends shape, rectangle extends shape and square extends rectangle. Let's talk about the rectangle first. In this rectangle class, you will notice that it's different from circle because the constructor expects a width and height in rectangle while in circle it expects a radius because that makes sense. Now you will also notice that this shape has this constructor which expects a name which is essentially a string. So this circle also calls the super method with the name which is circle and this rectangle also calls the super with either the square name or the rectangle name based on the width and height. Because a square is essentially a rectangle that means the width and height of the square would be exactly the same. In which case we say that hey this shape is a square otherwise it's a rectangle and in the end you will see that when we get a width and height we essentially assign them to this particular rectangle instance when that is created 
Finally, we have this square class extending rectangle instead of shape. Now you will be asking why don't we really extend it from shape? And that is because technically a square is a rectangle, but it has all four sides equal. So when we extend from rectangle, we are actually saying that this square is a shape, but also a rectangle. Why? Because when we extend the square from rectangle and rectangle extends from shape, then essentially this square is sort of in the tree or in the hierarchy of the shape. So it will inherit a lot of things. This square will inherit the width and height properties, but also the name property. So when we log those shapes, we will see that actually all of those contain everything that we just talked about. So let's actually do that. What I'm going to do here is that I'm going to just go ahead and console.log on all the shapes. So I'm going to say shapes and now we are going to see how they look in general. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to open the inspector and let's add a square and see what it has versus what a rectangle has versus what a circle. So I'll first add a square, then a rectangle and then a circle. Now you see that we got square, rectangle and circle because those are the classes. If I open the square, you see that this has the name, the width and the height, all the three things that we talked about because this square extends from rectangle. So it contains the width and height from this rectangle and it also extends from the shape indirectly. That's why it also has the name property. So you see the name here. Similarly, a rectangle has the height and width because that's defined in the rectangles class, but also has a name coming from the shape class. And when we talk about the circle, the circle has the name circle because it extends the shape class right here, but it also has this radius property that we get here. So that's how the inheritance is working right now. But if I open this circle, now let's talk about noticing some other stuff. Let's keep it simple for the beginning. If I open the circle object, you will see that here the prototype says shape, which means that this circles prototype will now contain this constructor or essentially you will see that this shape is the class which it is extending from. But the constructor here is a circle. Now, one more important thing is that in the end, you will see that all of this essentially extends from object. And now you will see that in general, when you extend it from object, you will get all its methods like to string and what other methods are available from the object itself. If we talk about square, that's a bit more complicated. If I open square, you see that the prototype is rectangle. Then if I open this, you see the prototype is shape. And if I open this, then we got object. So we got square extending rectangle, which is extending shape, which extends an object. So this is the whole stuff going on there. Now, what happens if I want to create something that is available to all the shapes? Would I have to go to circle, rectangle and square to add that particular functionality? Or can I just go to a shape class and then provide it here? And that is what we are talking about at this moment right now. What we want is a feature where if I click a particular shape, it starts spinning. Now I already have some things coded for that already. For example, in the style CSS, we have a rotate animation already. We also have in the app JS, I believe, uh, not in the app, but in the shape JS here, we have this shape class, which already has this class shape rotate applied, which is going to be applied if a shape has a property called rotation enabled. And that is true. If rotation enabled is true on a particular shape, then then it is going to start rotating. Otherwise, it is not going to rotate. I hope that makes sense. Now let's add this property to the shapes class. Before doing so, what I'm going to do again is open this and I'm going to do some magic there. So first of all, let's try to do one thing. Instead of shapes here, I'm going to just say shape zero. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to put an if condition. So I'm going to say if shapes, let's say shape, and then we say zero, and then we say console.log shape zero dot proto. So we can see the proto object here. So right now it doesn't show, but if I add, let's say a square, you see that we get the proto object and this proto object is essentially what this is extending from. So this shape, which is a square extends from a rectangle. That's why you see the rectangle object here. If I open this, now you see that this rectangle angle extends from this shape and this goes on and on and on. And we also get some functions available from here and there. Okay. So I hope this makes sense. Now that we have got this, let's talk about extending the functionality. So I'm going to go into the shape, the shapes.js and inside here, we are going to add this property called rotation enabled by default. This is going to be false, but we are going to also make this true. Now, how do we make this true? We essentially are going to create a function here, which we'll call toggle rotation. 
So this toggle rotation method would look something like this. And then what it's doing is that if it's false, it's making it true. Otherwise it's making it false and it's returning the final value, which has been changed now. This is essential for just keeping tabs into components. So I put it this way. Now let's save this and let's call this method when we click on a particular shape. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to shape.js where we have every shape here. It's either a circle or a rectangle as we know because a square is also a rectangle. So if we have this situation where we are showing a shape, we can actually go here and allow an on click method here. And here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toggle the rotation of the shape. So here what I can do is that I can say something like shape dot toggle rotation if I can see the names correctly. And once we do so, we also need to just get the value of the rotation. So we can say something like cons new rotation well and then we just need to set this so we can say set rotation enabled and here we can say new rotation well once we do so let's see what happens if i add a square here and if i click it you see that instantly it starts spinning now i have only added this rotation enabled function or actually this toggle rotation function to the shape class not on circle not on rectangle and definitely not on square so how did this square get this function because of inheritance because of the prototypal chain or because of the prototype pattern that we already have. And this makes it really easy to extend the functionality that we already know is inherited by other derived classes. And that really makes things easier for us. Now this possibility is the same for a rectangle. For example, I could click this and you can see that this is starting to rotate. If I click this again, this stops, this is stop. If I add a circle, boom, this doesn't rotate. Why? Because this is rotating. It's a circle. You won't even see it. So I'm just kidding. But apart from that, what if I only wanted to add something that is shared between a rectangle and a square, then I don't really need to add it into shape because that would automatically be available to circle. So if I wanted to just add something into rectangle, so it's shared by square as well, I would add it here. For example, I would just go here and create another function. For example, we would call log info, which is just a method. When you call it, it will just log the instance itself. So I would just say console.log this, which means that if I'm using a variable like rectangle one or RECT one, and if I just say log info, it will automatically log RECT one or the value of it. Now this log info should be available only to the shape that we have, for example. So if I go ahead and go to the shape JS, which is is this one where we are on click just setting the rotation enable I could also do this I could say if log info or if I could say something like shape dot log info if that's something that exists then we do shape dot log info so if I do this then I can inspect this and I can quickly go ahead and see what happens when I start clicking on something. So I'm going to clear this out and then I'm going to close this. And now if I add circle, add square, add rectangle, let's see what happens. If I click a circle, you see nothing is happening. If I click a square, you see that it logged itself. It logged the name of the square, the rotation, the width, everything about it. And if I click this again, you will see that now the rotation enable false. Previously, it was true. Similarly, if I click this, you see that it is a rectangle and now you see this as well. I'm going to click the square again. You see a square, you see a rectangle, and now this is not working for circle because the circle doesn't have this class. So now you know how to use this prototypal method to extend different things. And the fun part is that with ES6 classes, it almost looks like the classic object oriented pattern because these classes did not exist before ES6. So we had to use functions and we also had to use some sort of magic around the prototype object to achieve all of this. And one important thing to understand is that in memory, this toggle rotation function is declared only once. So it is shared between all the instances, just like, for example, if you are creating a new array of something, the functions like pop, push, they are only assigned once in the memory by JavaScript by default since they're out of the box. So they take only one place in memory and it doesn't matter how many arrays you create, those functions do not keep increasing the memory. Whereas some patterns in JavaScript, especially for example, the factory pattern, go watch the video if you have not already, it creates an additional set of functions if the factory contains a new set of function for every object. So this is really good to know. And I think that's pretty much it for this video. I have a lot of things to share, but it becomes really complex when it's a really long video. So I'm going to keep this as it is. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, press the thumbs up button, like this video, share this video with everyone and also subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next one.